I make it to be uh, five o'clock Eastern Daylight Savings Time in uh, Putnam Station, New York, and I am uh, calling the meeting to order at this time. Recording uh, in progress. We have with us tonight. Uh, wait a minute. Let me get the meeting is recorded then off here. We have with us the select board. We have Mark Hannon. Uh, we have Vic and we have Randy Drury. Is there anyone and Orca, obviously. Is there anyone else out there? Okay. Welcome everyone. Um, do we have any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? Nope. Okay. Um, so the first item on the agenda is resuming the discussion about how best to provide fire protection in Middlesex. Uh, action possible. Uh, and I believe Steve. Yes. Would like to be heard on this. Well, <clears throat> I wrote up, uh, I hopefully all, uh, everybody got it. Uh, the fire department's, uh, Wait, I, I don't, I don't know if the fire department got it. Hold on. That was probably, <laughs> uh, I'll just quickly say, and also they're not here yet. Okay. Well, you sent it to them, correct? No, I'm sending it to them now. Uh-oh. I had a crazy day today. Hold on. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I think we should I think we should go ahead and, and discuss what Steve has put together. We're not going to make a decision tonight yeah. uh, at any rate, and they'll have an opportunity to respond to this. Right. Um uh, question. Who knows? They may get they may yet still uh, still show up. They certainly knew that this is when we were gonna be discussing the fire department again, so. Yeah, yeah. Jeff confirmed that he would uh, be at the five, be here at five o'clock, so. Okay. okay. So, um, so with that, Steve, I, go ahead. All right, so what I had written up was uh, uh, some different line items, but one was like creating a new department and under the umbrella of the town of Middlesex, and the current 501c3 should be retained and function to organize fundraisers and social events for the department or, or whatever. And there may be more things in there. And then, <clears throat> and then third under there, I put retain any and all of the current members and hopefully all of the current members would want to be on board. Then I, uh, I listed it as under a new department uh, create and maintain an active recruiting program, uh, create and maintain a comprehensive training program, and then complete an ongoing list of clothing, gear, materials, and or equipment needed to keep the department and personnel safe, operational, and in compliance with the state and national standards. Um, then I had uh, consult with and I don't have his name there. It's the guy that Bob Gowan recommended that we get in touch with. It's a, I sent it to, the, to everybody else, Steve, and you should have gotten a copy. It's Peter Lynch, Chief of Peter Fire Lynch, Training. Is that what you meant? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll write that in here right now. Peter Lynch. So... I thought that uh, from from the recommendations of both the Waterbury and uh, the Montpelier uh, fire departments uh, with their recommendations, I thought that should be a really valuable resource. Uh, so that's why I put that. Um, to consult with him, uh, you know, as recommended by Mont Montpelier chief for all of the above items. Um, and I, he's probably gonna have a, a a lot of wealth of knowledge of of everything that we should be doing. Then I put it in timeline. I put create a new department by August 15th of 21. Training and recruiting programs initiated from day one. The department to be organized with possible limited functions in a six month time frame, and then department to be fully organized and functional within one year. Now, some of these may change, but in looking up a lot of data, uh, I, I think the, these are 
achievable. Uh, considerations. Uh, one of the considerations was fiscal year 21-22 budget that we'll have to look at. Um, legal assistance from our town attorney, insurance, uh, compensation to neighboring departments for their coverage, and fire call coverage in the interim time frame. Uh, the last thing I put on there, just some notes that Mon Montpelier and Waterbury Fire Department uh, had volunteered to help with the training and to help in any other way they can. And uh, Gary Dillon got back to me again today uh, stating that they're more than willing to help. Uh, they have an equipment officer that is willing to go up um, go over all of their equipment and gear and put everything on a spreadsheet and so that we know what we'd have to do over a period of time, whether it's one year, two years, or three years, depending on what we, what we really need to buy and replace. And then last on item I put on there, reiterating what my first item was, was I'd like to have the cooperation and participation of the current members of the fire department. And that's all, that's all I put down. So. We've got some work to do. <laughs> we've got some work to do. I, I think we've got work to do no matter what. I saw a, uh, a note from Jeff on some, a bunch of training stuff they'd done, which is great. I think anything we can do in the training field is great. But I, I personally think we need to move forward in the direction of what I just laid out. Um, there may be some changes or different items in there, but I think we need to move in that direction. So obviously, obviously there's some big unanswered questions in this. Yes. Uh, big unanswered question number one is going to be is will the current members of the fire, fire department be willing to continue. And I agree, hopefully they will. Um, but there's some chance that some or all of them uh, may leave. And if that happens, then we're in a different, uh, we're in a different place with a different challenge. Basically, we're gonna have to uh, make a deal with Waterbury and Montpelier on an interim basis to provide not just support, but basically fire protection. Um, and likely, uh, and I'm, I'm, believe me, I, I am hoping, uh, hoping that doesn't happen. But if, but if it does happen, um, we're going to have uh, budget issues big time. Likely, likely having to amend our budget, which would mean a special town meeting and all that uh, goes along with it. Um, but we've got to take it one step at a time, I guess. And here's uh, Eric Metivier. I'm sorry. Here's Eric Metivier. If you want to go over it again. Oh, Eric. Oh, there they are. They're here now. So, did you guys um, I guess get the proposal that Steve put together? Eric? Yeah. Uh, sorry, we had uh, computer problems here. Okay. What was what was said? I didn't hear that. So Steve Steve sent out a, or Sarah sent to you a proposal uh, that Steve Martin put together. Uh, I, Eric, I, just check your email right now. Yeah, I'm looking right now. I think we should review it with them again. I agree. And yeah. Steve, could you just clarify when you say yeah. um, uh, when, when you have that bullet point of um, create new department, does that mean like like municipal? Like what does that mean? Well, like legally. Well, let me just let me go down through the list again um, and and I'll try to explain that a little bit. So under this Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department, I, I had put some uh, headers in there. One was create a new department. The new department would be under the umbrella of the town of Middlesex. It would not be the 501c3, the private uh, department that it is now. Um, 
but I also put down there that the current 501c3 should be retained and function to organize fundraisers, social events uh, for the department or et cetera, whatever they come up with there. There's a lot of other departments that do it that way and it seems to work pretty good. And then I put the last bullet on there, I put retain any and all of the current members. I think that's real important uh, and we want all of the current members to to be in the fire department. It's going to be still going to be their department, but it'll be under the umbrella of the town. The, but what does that mean? Um, like what, how does that happen? Like, does it like become a municipal fire department? It becomes a mis municipal fire department based on uh, a select board vote, according to our town attorney. Yep. Okay. So one of the issues, one of the issues we have to talk about this is, in this is, you know, commuting, communicating this to the citizens. How, however, we're going to go forward, but there is no, uh, it's a select board vote, and and boom, it's done as of whatever date is in that, uh, in that motion. Yeah. The other thing I would say is a lot of the issues associated with this, for instance, uh, the insurance. Other than other than notifying the insurance company, um, when they will be delighted that it is a now a Middlesex entity. I mean, we provide all the insurance now. It's all under the town's uh, insurance, so there's really nothing to do other than notify the insurance company. Right. Okay. So <clears throat> again, and then one of the next headers I had was a new department, and that the bullets I put in there, create and maintain an active recruiting program, create and maintain a comprehensive training program, and then complete an ongoing list of clothing, gear, materials, and or equipment needed to keep the department and the personnel safe, operational, and in compliance with the state and national standards. And then the last bullet I put on there was consult with Peter Lynch. Uh, he was recommended by Montpelier Chief Bob Gowan to to get in touch with him to go over all any of the above items. Uh, that sounded like he is going to be a really good resource, and I think we should tap into that. Uh, timeline: uh, I had create the new department by August fifteenth of twenty one. Training and recruiting programs initiated from day one. Uh, department to organize with possible limited functions in a six month time frame, and then the department to be fully organized and functional within one year. Uh, again, I, it depends. I mean, it may be quicker than that, um, and hopefully it is. Uh, like, like I said before, the training that uh, has been going on recently is uh, going to do nothing but help the department anyway. Then I had considerations, uh, fiscal year 21-22 budget. Peter touched on that briefly. Um, it's, it's just considerations that we have to look at and there's probably more. I, I probably don't have a lot of things in this proposal. Then legal assistance from the town attorney, uh, assurance, compensation to neighboring departments for their coverage if that's needed and then fire call coverage in the in interim time frame. Uh, then I had some notes in there uh, that Montpelier and Waterbury Fire Department have volunteered to help the, with the training and to help in any other way they can. And I also stated, and it's not on that paper, that uh, Gary Dillon, the chief of Waterbury, got in touch with me again today and stated that uh, they're willing to help. They're willing to help with training uh, or any anything they can. And also his equipment officer is willing to come up to our department and go over stuff with our guys, make sure, uh, you know, whatever needs to be replaced or, or bought that we don't have and put everything into a spreadsheet so we can see what kind of a time frame we need to pay for this stuff. Then the last uh, bullet I have out there, I, again, reiterating what I said first, uh, I'd like to have, to have the cooperation and participation of the current Middlesex uh, Fire Department volunteers. 
And that's it. Again. I would also just encourage that we add on to this proposal somewhere probably under the financial piece around um, re um, uh, figuring out a compensation for the firefighters, for the volunteer firefighters, um, revisiting well, that. Yes, I, I do agree with you on that. I didn't put it in this proposal because I think there's going to be a lot of department stuff. What they're getting compensated for right now is is really it's really atrocious. They need to be compensated a lot more than what they are now. And I just have one more question, Steve. When it falls under the municipal, so you say, you know, by August 15th, and then um, you have sort of this timeline of like the organization of the department, does it become the select board um, task to assign a chief and a first officer and what, I don't even know the titles of these people, but is that then become our job? No. Okay. I, I envision what would happen and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Steve, but I envision though, like we do with, like we do with uh, uh, other entities that operate under the town that uh, they would come to us with a recommendation and we would appoint. Yeah, we would, right, we would approve and appoint, yes. Phil had a comment. No, or you had Peter, Peter covered it. So, uh, you know, we've, we've, got, we've got some details, we've got some details to work out, uh, a lot of details to work out, but um, the, the first big question mark is, and I know this is gonna be a big deal for all of you who are on the fire department, but we are really hoping, um, that you're gonna support the town and support the fire department and be part of this process. If, if you decide you're not going to be, or most of you decide you're not gonna be part of this process, then we're in, a, we're in a significantly different place than if you are. Then we're in a place of having to, having to start in a more start from scratch type scenario, which we would really prefer not to do. Um, we certainly, appreciate very much all your uh, all your efforts uh, right up to the current day providing fire protection in Middlesex. So none of this is meant to be uh, meant to be uh, a, a slam or, a, or an insult to any of you. And I hope you take it that way. I understand it may take some time to digest this, but I hope you take it that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I just barely saw this email, so I really had a chance to actually look through it and actually understand other than what you guys have just said, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I yeah. But uh, no, we get we it, and I'm, and I'm sorry, uh, you know, we had it on our, our schedule that, you know, tonight was the meeting to talk about the fire department again, and, you know, we this went out at the last minute, so, you know, mm -hmm. we're not expecting... <laughs> you to re react to it now and what i'd like you to do is is think about it and come back to us with, okay. with questions and concerns i'm sure you'll have uh you'll have a lot of them and uh yeah, questions concerns and recommendations yeah and uh you know that august 15th date is a is a is a is a placekeeper but if we can't get our act together by august 15th it might not happen by august 15th but again, a lot of it's going to have to do with with how many of you are interested in continuing and being part of the uh, part of the process. I guess I guess one of the questions I would have is what would be the benefits to be under your umbrella? Well, the, the I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand the, the right, 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 right. So the benefit of being under under our umbrella is you will actually be part of the town in in every sense you won't be an independent organization now some people may may see that as a negative i see that as a positive because it's going to change it's going to change the relationship between us and you you're really now going to be you're really now going to be part of us and you know we're going to be providing oversight help support and in every way that in every way that we can and uh 
you know, it's just what it, what it boils down to, I think, more than anything else is it is just difficult for the town to provide all the financial support and have no real oversight or input or, I mean, control is a bad word. I, I would use the word oversight of, yeah. of what goes on in the fire department. So, you know, I realize you could look at that and say, oh, that's a negative. They're going to get involved in our in our stuff. Well, I would tell you, um, we only want to help, not not hinder you. So, you know, being part of the town just, I think, is going to make that a much better situation. I also think well, it, you know, sends a message to the Waterbury and Montpelier Fire Departments, you know, who really have kind of, you know, basically are telling us like something needs to change. Um, we we definitely want to have a, a Middlesex Fire Department, right? We don't want to contract out to Montpelier and Waterbury. That's really expensive. We have a great fire department. We have a great building. We've got great volunteers. And I think, you know, this is this is an opportunity for us to say yes, Montpelier and Waterbury, who are our you know main supporters of the fires that we have. Yes, we're willing to work with you so that we can continue to maintain a good relationship, but still have our own fire department. And I think this this is an opportunity for us to. I mean, frankly, Eric, I I don't see you know much changing for you guys per se. Mm -hmm on a day-to-day -day basis. No. Um, I think this is more about, you know, the, when someone from the town says something or has some concern, we know about it, right? And we can help address it and we can work with the fire department. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think I agree that this, you know, is, for the most part, I think it'd be a positive thing for you guys and not to look at it like Peter said as, you know, some sort of we're taking this away from you. I think we're trying to strengthen you um, and be and have more of a partnership with with Montpelier yeah. Water Bay. At least that's the way I see this this all rolling out. I think that's exactly right. Liz. Thank you. Yeah, well said. Okay. Well, I mean, we can certainly, you know, bring it to the uh, the rest of the the group and and get input from them and 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 mull it over and get back to you guys for sure. And um, I don't know how we do it, but some some group of us. I mean, maybe we should have uh, maybe we should have a joint meeting between the select board and the fire department. That's you know, get everybody get everybody in the get everybody in the same. Uh, Get everybody in the same room. Yeah, that's just a that's just a thought. But uh, you know, there's nothing like looking people in the eye and getting to ask people directly questions rather than you know you funneling stuff to them, they funnel stuff back to uh, back to us. That's certainly so, a viable viable solution there. I mean, I think I have to believe all of us would be willing to more than willing to do that. Glad to do that. I would think we would be willing to do that. Yep. Yep. I think that's a great idea. Okay, well, why don't you why don't you talk it over? And assuming you agree, we'll in the yeah. in the near time frame we'll make that happen. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, I think it's a good idea. Okay, good. Yep. thanks, Eric. Oh, by the way, great job with the. Um, I missed the last meeting. I don't know if you were there, but um, mm -hmm. great job with the uh, tour that you gave oh. on the fire department. We had really good turnout. Yeah, and, was, um, yep. and I thought it was, I thought it was really well done and I learned a lot and, um, you know, so thanks for awesome. doing that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. People came to that Liz. I totally forgot about it. I don't know how many people were there, Eric, like 20, 30. I mean, there was some people. Yeah, there was, there was at least 20. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Good. Yeah. See, that's that. I mean, there's a good example of something that we should be doing on an ongoing basis because so many people in town have no idea what goes yep. on with the fire department, you know, and going down there and seeing what we have down there and the people down there and meeting the volunteers, all good. Awesome. Good. Okay. Well, um, 
that's really it for tonight. Unless I, re I realize we've we've thrown a lot at you in a in a little period of uh, of time here. So we look forward to hearing hearing back from you, and uh, yeah. we'll set up that joint meeting. Yeah, yeah that's I a great idea. Thank you. Okay. Can thank I you ask so much, guys. Yep. Oh, hey, hold on. Can I ask a question before they go away? Okay. We got something from Jeff um, about the response of the calls. Did did Eric? Did you want to talk about that with us? Because I had I two. Did, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to see it. Oh, I know. Okay. It, yeah. I think and he had just sent it out because he he was running behind. He had some work being done at his house or something was going on, and he was running behind. So. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't get I, a chance to see it. I just wanted you, if you wanted to comment on it, to have somebody from the department, but they, we can do it at the next meeting. Yeah. I think we just let them mutually talk. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yep. guys. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome to, uh, we're welcome to stay. We're not, we're not shooing, shooing well, you away. If you want to. Well, we have our own meeting. To this fun, you're welcome to continue. All right. Yeah. Well, we have our own meeting to attend to also tonight. So. Okay. All right. All righty. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Highway report. Updates on Middlesex road projects. Action possible. Review and approval of 2021 certificate of compliance. Action likely. Review and possible approval of $13,750 VTRANS grant with a $2,750 town match to implement best management practices and in compliance with the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation Municipal Roads General Permit. Action possible. Wow. Victor. Wow. You're on. There you go. Um, yeah, you, um, I believe uh, one or most of the select board or some of the select board has to sign that permit and and we'll get the $13,000. And uh, we, uh, that that's for like ditching uh, uh, or uh, putting in stone, uh, doing the uh, agency of natural resource uh, stormwater mitigation stuff. And I think that'll be done uh, most likely, I talked it over with Shane. Um, they're moving to Bulldog Road and uh, Portal Road, and I think uh, I think we'll use it over there. So that's, that a, that's a straight up grant, correct? Correct. No, there's a match. No, well, there's a match. Yeah, but it's a grant. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. But none of that money, none of that was used for the uh, the park, the Shady Rail Park. Is that right, Victor? No, I don't think we're doing any uh, stormwater mitigation over there. That's nothing to do with us. No, that's that's not us. They're tearing that place apart down there. I I was going to go in there and check it out, and I didn't get a chance, but I will. But they're do I presume all the stuff? Yes, Sarah. I just want to clarify with uh, Victor that if you get this grant, you'll use it on Bulldog Road, or any is that the only place, or are there other places? Uh, to be determined. To be determined. Okay. You like that? <laughs> Can I add that any invoices or time that is put against because we can use in kind, not just tax. So any time devoted to this grant work needs to be noted so on the time sheets or somehow so we can capture that. I went over that with Shane or Shane went over that with me. Uh, when he told me about it and he's and he is aware that uh, he will uh, okay. track of that the hours and the time and the machinery and all that stuff absolutely great thanks great. but thanks for reminding us yep okay can we move right along then no you need a motion yep i can't move it nope somebody else can <laughs> i move it I don't know what I'm moving. Uh, is it to approve the? It's it to it sign the approve the letter of intent to participate in the municipal roads grants and aid program, right, Vic? That's what you're talking about. That is correct. Good. That's what I moved. I'll second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, which is to 
approve a $13,750 Vermont Transportation Grant with a $2,750 town match, which can be in kind. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Wait, could you amend the motion to say that uh, one person can sign on behalf of the select board because this needs to be signed? Okay, sure. If everybody yes. else agrees. I, 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 uh, I agree to that amendment uh, and I'm incorporating it in the motion I made. And who's second is Steve. I do. I think and you agree with that change, Steve? I do. You got to okay. appoint somebody. Who's the person you got to appoint? Steve. Well, well, who's going down to the offices? When does, uh, it, when does it have to be signed? Before the ASAP. I'm sorry. What did you say, sir? By June 20, I said ASAP, but it's fixed right. June 25th. It must be submitted via email yeah. by June 25th. But I can, I can sign it and scan it, for instance. Yeah, I can just. I mean, I don't I, have I to just, actually, nobody has to actually show up at your office, right? Correct. I will. I will fill it in, try to save it, and scan it to you. Um, it's weird because it just gives you like it's a high, it's a fillable PDF. So maybe we could just sign it. You could just sign it as the Middlesex Select Board, and I can attach minutes. Because there's no there's no signatures. It says return signed letter, but it just says duly authorized representative. So we just need a duly authorized representative, I guess. Or to electronically sign. I'm happy to be that person unless somebody else wants to okay, be. So, um, the amendment should be that can be um, electronically signed by the chair of the select board. Perfect. There you go. Let the minutes reflect that amendment. And Sarah, that is the 25th, correct? Correct. I'm Even looking at it right. Squirrel. I'm looking at it my, right now. Even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the blind squirrel? Now we also have to deal with the certificate of compliance. Yes, that's also for something that we need to do. But it's just a routine thing. Uh, you guys have copies of it. It's something we do every year, and somehow we missed it this year. I don't know. I move, I move approval of the certificate of compliance for town roads and bridge standards and network inventory. Do, do before we go on, can I just get the road foreman to say that we further certify that we do or do not have an update highway network inventory? We we do, right, Vic? Yep. That box should be. You have to say yes. Yes. Okay, so that box should be checked. Yep. And you're also saying that you certify that the standards do uh, meet the meet or exceed the minimum requirements the June fifth, twenty nineteen state approved template. Say yes. Ah. Uh yeah now okay good but but is this for the is this for the uh uh the general permit municipal roads general permit no this is has to go with uh another v all the v trans grants i think uh shane's applying for one it may have to do with the paving you always have to include the certificates of compliance the um certificate Standards of highway mileage bridge specifications correct Correct. This is the certificate certificate of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory, and we do it every year. Yep. Okay. I want I want you to I want to say yes. We got to sign that, but I also want to talk about it. Okay. You want to talk before we approve it? Well, no. It's just I think it's very very important, and I tried to get to this the other day, but you got another telephone call. Yeah. And, and it's kind of sketchy. Whether we, you know, you can sign it. Is that all you want to do? You want to sign it, or do you want to well, do it? We're we're certifying. <laughs> we're certifying that we we either. Okay, have we're not. Or we're That's do. all. That's a, there's a question. There's a gray area there. And Steve, I went down and I talked with Steve, and it's not just that, and it's not Sheen that that has an issue, but we have some people on our crew that have old habits are hard to break, and I just wanted to tell you that. Uh, if we're going to sign that thing, we're going to adhere to it. Okay. I agree. End of statement. I don't want to give it lip service. I mean, we're going to do it. What does it mean, Vic, in actual terms? Why are you saying that? Well, there's certain ways in, in, in uh, there's 
There's standards on how to do everything and anything on your bridges, on your highways, uh, on your roads, um, your typical sections, your ditching, yada, yada, yada. And we're gonna do it to the best that we can. And Shane is in agreement, but we're having a little issue. And, uh, and I think Steve is aware of that because I had a little chat with him and he was very supportive. But I just, I just want you guys to know that we're, we're gonna do, uh, yeah, just going to give it lip service. And no, no, no. Steve, Steve reiterated that for me, and he helped us out. And uh, I think I, th I want to I want to thank him for that. And if you want to know more about it, Peter, call Steve. Well, all I'm saying is, if the, if the road crew has a problem with that, I'm sorry, but those, that's the way the. Yeah. It's, I'm, sorry too, but, so. I'm sorry too, but I'm sorry too, Peter. But you know what the issue is, and we keep dancing around. And at some point, we're going to have to get together, and we're going to have to uh, address uh, those that issue. Uh, I I personally think it can be resolved before it comes to that, but okay. that's my that's okay. my take. Why is there a reason that we're around. not naming the issue? Yeah, what are we talking about? Is there yeah. someone that's like not ditching the roads properly? I mean, it feels the, the it feels like we're coming at this is. without without wanting to talk about what the issue is. And for somebody like anybody attending this meeting who who isn't part of these conversations, you just you're lost. So here's the so here's the issue I think, and right. and help me out, uh, Victor and Steve, is that we have people on our road crew who have years and years and years of experience. And they have ways of doing things the way they have always done things. And that's the way they like to do them. And that's the way they believe it should be done. But the fact of the matter is, <laughs> we have these rules and regulations that we're supposed to follow and they need to follow them. I don't care how they did it 20 years ago. Well, um, I, I thought that, but, but what, what, what specifically is it that they're not doing? One specific thing I, I'll just bring up it was compaction. Um, you know, when when they're doing some putting in a culvert, um, you know, doing the proper compaction. And that was one of the big items. And that was one of the items that, that Victor talked to me about. But I, I think that that's squared away. But I do agree with Vic. We're going to sign this thing of compliance. We just need to do them right. And and I think the road crew, the the ones that are used to doing it their own way, will follow right along and do it the way we want. And the other thing I would say is, if it's a matter of having them get additional training or go to workshops or whatever it is to get them to understand this better and think it isn't some random thing that Shane and Victor and the select board have come up with, um, we can do that, but there should be no uh, misunderstanding, Victor, that it's our intent to do this. Okay. No, I just want to make it clear. I want to get part of the minutes. Yep. Yep. Nothing wrong with uh, being right up front. Um, nope. I like those six. You're right. Meetings, so You're if you right. want me to come back, come back in and uh, talk to them about that, as long as I don't have to talk about boots or trailers to move the excavator again for the 25th time, I'll come. Or uh, putting in a part to uh, make the uh, brakes work on the uh, loader. Hey, so by the way, they put that part in and nobody got back to me. I know it. I know. I heard. I told. And I I mentioned it. Okay. What was the what What was the determination when they actually looked at it that it really needed to be replaced? I do not know answer to that question. Yeah, obviously, but I don't know yeah, the. But I, I'm just, my concern of this. This is a. Just to just to back up a little bit, so that so everybody knows what's going on, I got I got tangled up in a little situation at the town garage a week or so ago, and um, the service guy was coming to work on the brakes on the loader, and Shane had been there early in the morning on a Friday when they don't normally work to meet with him, but uh, the service guy was late in arriving. I was talking to Shane, so I said, "Well, I'll I'll go over there and make sure he's there and see what's going on." So. I went over there and um, he couldn't find anything wrong with the brakes, the service guy. And there was nobody there to show him what was wrong with the brakes. So Charles came over and, and showed him or told him that at times 
the brake pedal sticks down. The brakes work fine, but to get the brakes off, you have to stick your toe under the brake pedal and try it back up. And uh, long story short, I suggested to them that, and, and the problem is that the pedal is connected to a rod down on the floor of the cab of the loader. So it's subject to dirt and salt and water and all the stuff that you would expect to be down there. And I said, well, what about, what about cleaning it up and lubricating it? And, and the service guy said to me, he said, well, I think that's a good idea. And all the years I've been working on these loaders, I've never, ever, ever had to replace this part. So I said, well, let's do that. Let's try it. And if it turns out it doesn't work or there's some real problem, we'll go ahead and change it. Well, Charles was adamant that it needed to be changed. And I said, listen, Charles, I'm making the decision that we're not changing it. So if there's some reason it needs to be changed, I want the Anderson guy or you to call me and explain to me why it needs to be changed. Well, the long and the short of it is they went ahead and changed it, $1,100, and never called me. Lost labor. It's a little source of uh, aggravation to me because I, I spent the time to try and uh, understand what was going on, and the service guy had agreed with me that that was the approach to take. And then they didn't do it. So I don't know whether they found something catastrophic wrong where it needed to be changed. I have no idea, but it didn't make me happy. So anyway. I think we have to reiterate too, this was on a Friday and Shane did come in early and then he left. This is no reflection on anything Shane did. He wasn't- oh, no, 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 no. No, I just wanna make that clear. I just wanna make that clear. That's all right. He wasn't there and uh, so. Uh, I, know, I, I called and spoke to him, and I, I, also, I also spoke to Victor afterwards to say, yes, he you know, did. I, I've made this decision, and I hope it's the right one, and if it's the wrong one, it's on me. So, so who authorized them to make the change then if, if you, you said they couldn't do it? I say nobody authorized them to do it. So that's exactly my concern, Mary. Peter, did it. Did it. Peter did authorize it if it needed to be changed, but he wanted them to call. Right, correct. And I never got a call. I don't know what time you were down there, Peter, but I saw the technician leave about 20 after 3 when I was picking up my kids from school on Friday. Yeah, so he so. was there most of the day. It was like, I think it was about 10 o'clock in the morning when I was over there. But this is a big thing to change. A lot of hydraulic lines had to be disconnected and reconnected and whatever. It just, it was telling to me that the service guy said they had never had to replace one of these valves before. So who knows? Hopefully it's the right thing and they just forgot to call me, but they didn't call me and I don't like that. I specifically asked them to call me. Anyway. Let's move right along, Peter. Yeah, let's move along. I agree. Okay. okay. So and have we voted on this, Peter? I'm sorry, what? Did we vote on uh, this? I made a motion to approve the certificate. I don't think and we ever did, Mary. Okay, so, and I'm not sure who uh, I'm not sure who seconded it. I'll second that. Well, yes, Sarah. Could you please also in this motion authorize a duly authorized administrator to sign this? Yes. We will. Yes. So moved by Mary, seconded by Steve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have to just use my picture because my iPad is running out of power. I didn't realize it or I would have powered it up. Okay. But you guys okay. didn't authorize a representative to sign it. No, we said we did so you can add the language. I, I said I did on my motion and then Steve said he agreed. So it was amended. But you need to pick, name somebody who can sign this this paper right here since you guys are no longer if you were meeting in person you could all sign it but i need to know i presume, I presume it would be the usual person sarah oh. unless somebody objects who's the usual person hey. children's always authorized <laughs> okay well i'm gonna, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna have to think you can sign what if about you say, if you, it doesn't matter it says duly authorized administrator just pick somebody who can How sign it the instead. road commissioner Peter. the road commissioner he's friendly Sure. I don't care. You just need to name somebody in the minutes let's so that I can. Easiest, let's just do it the easiest way. So 
Victor, unless you're dying to sign it, the easiest way is for Sarah to be the authorized person to sign it. That's fine with me. Anybody object to that? No. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that confusion. Um, so, Victor, I do have one other quick question for you, and it doesn't relate. I have to about you. seven for you. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. We did get the paving grant. Is that correct? As far as I know, yes. And when do we think that will happen? Spring 2022. Okay. Okay. And when will the grant be awarded? Soon. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. That's really spring 22. We've been waiting for that for a long time. That spring of 2022 is because um, the uh, the contractor with the lowest bid has a big state job. It's Jay Hutchins, no big secret, and uh, it saved quite a bit of money. They will do it next year for the same price, but they got to do it next spring. Yep. Same. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. And we have some work to do on that, and we will talk about it. Uh, we have some culverts that we think uh, Shane, uh, Shane and I went down and looked at them all and measured them all up. And, um, um, but I think due to the depth of some of those, we may have to hire out because you'll, we, we'll need a stone box and a bigger excavator. Yeah, well, let's, let's just not do what we've done in the past where we pay first and then go dig it up and put in culverts. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please, let's not do that. Okay. We won't. We won't. No. Okay. That doesn't meet the uh, the roadway and bridge uh, that you uh, that you uh, just signed. Um, Did we get any paperwork saying it's been awarded? Uh, Ashley Bishop still has it, but she's told Shane a couple of times that it looks like it's going through. It is, but we will. I will get that. I will check with that. I'll keep on top of that during. As soon as okay. Ashley gets this paper that I just signed and I'm going to scan tonight, you'll get your grant. You'll get your paperwork. Okay. Right. That was holding it up. All right. All right. Great. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. I wasn't aware of that. Hey, Peter, here's a big one for you. The city of Montpelier, I called them a couple of weeks ago. And this is my I, other favorite subject. Yeah. And, and, and the gentleman, uh, his wife, was having a baby and I guess it took two or three weeks. And, uh, but anyways, we went up today with a GPS and we set the uh, line, the property line It's right at the edge of the pavement and it's painted. Wow. So Shane, I, I, I went down and told Shane, I was working myself right in the area with, uh, for myself right in the area. And uh, he's going down to look at it. We're going to stake it and maybe we'll even get a sign. Hey. Yep. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay. So the next, is it in the middle? Which end of no man's land is it? Or is it in the middle? What I'm talking the about is the, is the little section at the end of East Hill where we intersect with Montpelier. Yeah. It's right There's at the end section of that. We didn't pave and they didn't pave. And I've been calling it no man's land. Right. So it's right at the end of that pavement. Which end? The end of our pavement or the middle end of side, Right where the dirt and the middle side and comes together. So they're the ones who cut it short. That's the way I see it. Perfect. Good. Hopefully they'll fix it. <laughs> wow, we had it. We Good work, Victor. I know. I know that's a little thing, but I drive back and forth across that every day, and I think you know there's got to be some happy resolution to this. Yeah. Rather than every, we ignore it and they ignore it. Well, we've got the same situation on the end of Center Road where the state correct. owns it. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, correct. Same thing. Yeah. And I think that is state all the way up there, if, if, uh, if my memory is correct. Yes, it is. Um, the grader is coming maybe this week or the first of next week. There's no sense of telling you which day it's going to come because then if it doesn't come, we're going to catch We're going to get grief. So uh, it's but it's coming. And, good. and and um, they're gonna they're, the graders coming and the uh, plow harness, which is the thing that we bought on the front to add weight for the front wheels, uh, for Liz and uh, Mary and Phil, um, and the roller 
uh, will take some time, but they will come up to the shop in Middlesex and do that uh, with no additional charge. So, Are they going to want money when they deliver? No. They know they can't get it till after the 1st of July. Okay. They are aware of that. We call okay. that the, 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 Dorinda, the Dorinda rule. <laughs> okay. No money till the 1st of July. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we finally got that, that slide area done, uh, thanks to Steve and uh, Shane. Um, we got the water cut off there. Uh, I call it Vic Dwyer's Brook over there on McCullough Hill, which uh, starts on my property, but Anyways, uh, we um, we dug down and uh, we found the water and we put the water in the ditch and we put stone and, and the water's going into the culvert and it seems to be very little, if any, uh, seepage across the road. And uh, Shane put some uh, smaller rock and then some bigger rock to stabilize it. And actually, it's the first time I've seen it happen in quite a while. But we took material from our ditching and put down there and kind of made that a, a, a better slope on the right hand side. And of course, we've been putting the new culvert in. So that got a new culvert also. And uh, several people have told us that it looked very nice. Good. Well, Good. we got that done. Um, um, oh, the other. Uh, Well, that's the third. Thing. Okay, so we got another grant for four thousand dollars for a. It was it uh, was called a rock grate. Everybody, nobody knew what it was for, really. I didn't. I I had no idea. But it yeah. turns out that for eighty seven hundred dollars, or I think that would be forty seven hundred more bucks of of our money, we can get a new stone sand grizzly. And grizzly is the yes. that they dump. The, the frozen sand over in the winter time and breaks it up and so then you get all fine sand but we can use it if we haul our if we ever take ditch stone out and ever haul it back to the to the town garage we can re reclaim the stone wait a minute Vic, hold on yep have, have we gotten this grant yes <laughs> yes yes when did when did we apply and why don't we have the paperwork for that oh did we get it from Paul applied for it. Paul. Oh. A year ago. Uh, do you have? <laughs> I'm gonna need some. We need to create yeah. books and doc documentation. I can't keep up with this. We can't. Al. Is there any match to it? Is it? I mean, how we much know is nothing it? about it? Yeah, we get. I just said we're gonna have to spend forty-seven hundred bucks. We're spending forty-seven. Then how much is the grant for? Four thousand. Four thousand seven hundred and twenty. Right, seven hundred and twenty. Right? Oh. But okay, wait a minute. You're, you're missing the point. How much is the town out? Four thousand, right, Steve? Yes. So, yeah. so we're only getting for seven hundred. Dot. If we're out four thousand, and the grant's only for four thousand seven hundred. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> What's Could the grant for? Explain? The grants for forty seven hundred and twenty oh. for Steve? Yes, it is. And the grizzly is eighty seven hundred. Eighty uh, eighty eight fifty eight. Okay, that's a new number for me. But anyway, so we're gonna have to spend that that amount of money. The difference. Yep. Forty one hundred dollars and change. Yep. yep. Exactly. Yep. Well, we have to do it before oh, July first. Where, yes. Where this uh, Vic, I think you can get Okay, this is crazy. From the, well, <laughs> this money we can't keep grant, track of what's I, coming in. Well, uh, all right. Hang on a minute. Don't don't, don't get don't. upset. This this is something that I have told everybody about more than once back some time ago. It yeah, was it finally was approved, approved and I don't know where the paperwork Hold is. On. Hold on. I got to mute these. Okay, I muted him. Go ahead. Okay. I don't know where the paperwork is, but I know that Vic or Shane can talk with Ashley Bishop, and that's where it goes through, and we can get the paperwork. But okay. this is something that I've mentioned before. This is not a new thing. Right. It's not a new thing, and I thought, actually, I thought, uh, why, uh, I thought um, Sarah sent it to me. 
that I've seen a copy of it. So neither Shane or uh, Shane's got one over at the at the. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not uh, sure. But like Steve says, we'll get it. No. Okay. Yep. So, we owe an apology to uh, Jill Burry and uh, probably Randy too. She went up through uh, this morning and uh, we were digging culverts. Uh, Peter, uh, we didn't we didn't know we were going to do it, and and we thought we could do half and half, and I say and and they couldn't, so we had to, so Jill had to turn around. So uh, I apologize profusely to her for that. Um, uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't know we were going to put them in today. Um, yesterday it rained. I thought it was going to rain today, so we wouldn't be doing it, but we ended up doing it. Or we would have had to move the excavator a long ways back if we just ditched. Or we would do nothing. So to, come, uh, to fix that, I put a post in the Front Porch Farm that uh, from 81 McCullough Hill Road to East Hill for the next uh, four weeks, we will be doing ditching, graveling, and changing culverts. Now, if we're not changing, if we're not digging up the road to change the culvert, you can get through. And the only people that it really affects uh, greatly um, is the people that want to get their kids to school. And I, as far as I know, Jill, Amy, and Sven, and Anna, uh, and Lee Rosenberg. And is there anybody else that you know? Uh, it's all over Thursday, Vic. It's all over Thursday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. There you well, you, you're, you're golden then. You're golden. Uh, because uh, we won't be putting in any color tint until next Monday. Well, she she'll appreciate the uh, the comment. Hey, I, I think the world of your wife, and I just felt terrible that she had to turn around. If uh, we'd have got through somehow, so that's what we did. Good communication is a wonderful thing, right? And okay, what is let's see. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I guess we already brought that up. Okay. Um, okay, and I think I better bring that up later between Steve and I. And, <laughs> and uh, it didn't go, the first part didn't go out over <laughs> very well. Okay, are we good? Um, Victor. Ah. Say yes. Say yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you don't want to know anymore, no, that's it. But that's did it. we did we approve everything we need to, Victor, that was scheduled to be discussed tonight? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I believe we did, Mary. Yeah. Okay. And maybe you don't want to know as much as this. Just say so. I won't. <laughs> Good. I like, I like to know more rather than less, so uh, I like it. Yeah. Well, you know, you know about it. Steve knows about most of it because you guys talk, but uh, Phil and uh, Liz and Mary don't. So. Yeah, I like to know about it too, Vic. I mean, this is where Hi guys. this is where eighty percent of our money goes. So, yeah. Yeah. As a taxpayer, it's wonderful to hear the efforts that are being made to go out and get outside money. To bring into the town so um great job guys yep yeah. and 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 i want to say to steve i i don't mean anything shane's doing an excellent job and i guess i don't i, I guess i don't want to apologize to it for it but that uh, uh standard uh specifications for roadway and bridges is near and dear to my heart because i had to follow it for 50 years <laughs> yeah there you go understand okay thank you steve you're welcome. Well, and it is. Yeah, we don't. We don't need to go back and revisit no. that. Yeah, don't no, don't beat that horse anymore. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay, Dorinda, Treasurer's report updates on town's financial status, including Benderson developments, 
failure to pay $4,500, and he never got back to me, Dorinda. Yeah, there's a shocker. Yeah, um, so I don't know what I don't know what our uh, what our recourse is on that, but well, I did hear from, and I don't know what impact. I don't know if Sarah has any insight, but I heard from someone from Val San Giacomo office who wanted to know how much Benderson owed us. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, they had originally talked to Sarah. It's a uh, Brooke Dingledine. She, you know, she's been dealing with um, consolidated uh, as a tenant uh, of Benderson's for quite some time. So she's trying. She is she's gathering all this info and is dealing with Benderson. Get them to pay their Welch Park car, uh, fair share. And she also said she's having a hard time getting Carl Balin on board with this. But that's not our problem. I think Dorinda, you gave her all the information she needed, right? Carl, ba Carl Balin is paid up. He is not an issue at yeah, all. Yeah, this is between Brooke and this is between them. But it has nothing to do with Consolidated. Benderson's the property owner and he's liable. His issue with Consolidated is with Consolidated, not with right. the middle. But she's, she's, she's been representing Consolidated in regards to dealing with Benderson and Benderson dealing with that well. So that's part of that. Do you, you guys remember when Brooke showed up at the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. But I think go ahead, I'm sorry. this is this is a problem. I mean, this goes back to April of 2020 that they owe us. And I don't know why the town is being the bank for this. I've asked for at the three or four years I've been on that something be done about this. And it's not. Well, the question is. Well, Dorinda, have do we just, you do we just stop? Do we, I mean, I, I, I'm ready to stop paying the bills. Well, how about if we um, we talk to our attorney about about what we can do? I mean, first, I think we can put a lien on the property, but that's not going to get us the money. I get their attention. Steve, I couldn't understand what you said. I said it might get their attention. I mean, I think we should okay. definitely put a lien on there. So here's here's the whole point, though, is, you know, I think we need to, and I know John Riley doesn't like this, but I think we need to withdraw the town from Welch Park and let, let Benderson and Balin and those people have all the fun they can have. And if that raises hell with the state permit, which is what John Riley think it's going to do, I, okay. I'm beyond caring at this point in time. I mean, w they have made us the patsy for all this time. And I, I know Carl, Carl, Carl does pay. He's difficult to deal with, but he does pay. But this business with, with Consolidated and Benderson is just ridiculous. They never signed, they never signed the lab. We went through all this work to create a new amended, I don't know what it was, certificate of organization. What do you call it, Dorinda? Yeah, well, bylaws like or that. whatever it was. I guess amended bylaws for Welch Park. Yeah. They never signed it. So what does that mean? I don't know. They promised to sign it. They said they'd sign it, but they never signed it. So. And they ignore us. So. <laughs> I guess, you know, what's the direction I take here? I mean, do I, when, what happens when the next bill comes in? Well, what, what's the status with Brooke? Did she say she was going to get him to pay or did she She just... never said anything to me. She thanked me for the information and that was it. What was this to cover? What, what did we pay for? Well, this is for insurances um light bits for there was a bill to Chanette. i think something went out for permits um for the water you have to pay that permit bill fee or something every year or whatever mm -hmm. um it, it goes all the way back to april i didn't print out the thing in front of me so i can't tell you what all of them are but okay so um, we're we're essentially paying any of those kinds of things for bills for all the tenants of the park and then supposedly getting reimbursed. 
you know, my sense is if we're going to have our attorney look into something, I agree with you, Peter. Let's put them on notice. It said it's our intent to withdraw. We no longer will be paying other people's shares. I mean, if we have a, a share that we have to pay, sure, pay our piece, but put the others on notice that says, nope, we're not doing it. We're done. No, I say, I say a little different than that. I say we just withdraw. There's no okay. benefit to the town of being part of Wells Fargo. No. Now, the last time, and it was probably eight or nine months ago, I brought this up to John Riley, and he said, oh, that's going to that's gonna cause major problems because the state wants to have the municipal entity on the, on the permit. And I said, well, they're not going to close down our fire station. I mean, I don't care if it causes some problems. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Dorinda's more than sick of it, and I'm more than sick of it. Yeah. I'm scared to talk to Dorinda because she brings it up every time I talk to her. Well, I, I like just... Dorinda. I don't think it's right that the taxpayers are holding the bag on this, nor do I think we're we're incurring the cost to write the check, just put them in the envelopes to put the postage on all this stuff, and it's an expense to the town. It's not big, but I, I still think there's time involved. There's, you know, um, I just isn't right that we're carrying this and we get nothing out of it. Right. I I agree totally. Well, let's let's do this. I'm going to say to John Riley, we want out. So yeah. come up with a plan. Come up with a plan to get us out and let us know what the ramifications are. And uh, also, if you have some scheme to get to get Benderson to pay their share in the meantime, please do that. And that's going to cost us a little bit in legal fees, but. Uh, well, I'll expense it out to them all. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you yep. go. Sorry, I'm in the meeting. Charge them interest, too. Well, that's the other thing. We don't even charge interest or anything. Yeah. yeah. We just want the money. And, and more than anything else, we just want to get out of this. Right. I mean, back way back years ago, whenever this first started, it was perceived to be a benefit to the town to have the park there, blah, blah, blah. And we started doing it, and we've been stuck with it ever since. Does the town use that in any way, shape, or form? We're part of the park. Our fire department is there, but we do not use the we do not use the water system. So we do maintain the road. Uh, that's a good question. We yeah. do. We, we plow it too. When there was paving done on the road, it was, it's a private road. I don't, it's not a town road, is it? No. No, it is not. It's a private road. We, I think we plow it. Yeah, we, we do plow it. We, we do, do plow it because uh, we go down to our the fire fire fire. there. Yeah. We plow it. But when it was, when the upper part of it was paved, it was all split up between the, it's a, it's a private road. It's not a town road. I mean, one of the things that one of the things that occurred to me as as a way of negotiating our exit from this association is to say that we would we would take over responsibility for the road. But we're not there yet. OK, um, moving on. Um, so I, the, what? The, so I would say you should, just like everyone else says, stop paying the bills when they come in. Okay. I think Any... you've got to put people on notice that says we're going to do that. Yes. Here's the, so here's the, here's the only problem with that, Mary. I don't care if we don't pay for permits and things like that. If we let the insurance be canceled, we're putting the town at risk. Right. And I think that's a mistake. Mm. And what's the insurance bill, Dorinda? It's like fifteen hundred a year, I think. Yeah, it's, I know it's like over a thousand. So, right. like I said, I don't have, I didn't print out any of that information in front of me. Let's listen. Let b before we do before we do anything, let me have a conversation with John, uh, yeah. with John Riley, and I'll have a report for you at our next board meeting, and then we can figure out what the next step is. Okay. Very. Okay. Um. So I submitted everything for that $72,000. Ashley was said it was perfect. And so we should be seeing that money. Oh, so, Congratulations. So, Good well, job, Brenda. 
Well, you were in on it too, Steve, but she said that was everything she needed one time around. So good. Well, didn't she also say it was perfect? She did use the word perfect, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess what, I mean, I think you should really give some thought as to the best use of this money. Um, because before it arrives and just, you know, yeah. oh, Rick is already raising his hand. No, <laughs> it's not yours. We've already paid for it. So it's ours. <laughs> um, but no, Rick is raising his hand. So, but I think that's something you should think about. Yeah. Um, I obviously think you should put it on the grader. Um, we looked into, uh, we're looking into extended warranty. Yeah. And I think it goes out for 10 years. So if we put it, put most of it on the grader, uh, we would, we would have warranty as long as we owned it. Cause I think we'd own it in 10 years. That's just my thoughts. That's all. Yeah. Well, I just want to, I mean, and that's a great idea, but I think there's also, if you're talking about, um, and maybe the money should just be, because we've already expended the funds, it's like, it's te technically doesn't have to be used just for highway, because we've already paid those highway right. funds. Right. So, um you know, another thought I had is if we're going to incur any kind of extra costs that aren't budgeted for, say, the fire department or something else, this may be, you know, some funds that are not being used. I mean, I hate to pay down a loan if we need extra funds to cover something else. Yeah. That's my that's, thought. I think that's a good point. Until we until we hear back from the fire department and have some idea how that's going to go. If we're, if we're going to be creating a fire department from scratch and paying for primary uh, response from Waterbury and Montpelier, we're going to need a slug of extra money. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure how soon it'll come, but so I don't know if it'll make it into before the end of June or if it'll arrive after July, but Anyways, that's that. Um, good news. Yeah, it is good news. Um, I also sent an email out to Bonnie about doing the audit because even with all the um, concerns I had last year, um, I feel that because of all the transition, it was good to keep the consistency. I did not hear back from her. So I don't know if that's a subtle statement or if that is just, I haven't heard back from her. And Peter, you know her, so you know, I'll rely on your insight on that one. I have no, I have no idea, Dorinda, I would follow up with her. So send it again? Yeah. Okay, all right. I know, you know, the, the accounting world in the world of COVID is a completely topsy-turvy. They've had a nightmare doing audits and, you know, they're all fouled up. So who knows how behind she is, but. And that's kind of why I felt we should probably keep with her rather than trying to start down a new path. Not this so. year. I, believe me, I agree. Okay. Um, also, I noticed after I sent out the financials, which I don't know if you guys have any questions on that, that is through everything that was paid today where we stand. Um, the one thing I noticed that didn't get in there was the school payment. So I'm going to have detail. To, yeah. minor detail. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to have them issue that payment and I'll have to send everybody out a special order to do yep. sign off on that. Okay. I, um, I didn't really have any any question about the uh, the orders. the The budget report just pointed out to me again that, you know, and and you know the good news is I think it shows we're in, we're in good shape. You know, we've under projected our income once once again. We've had we've had extra income, but there are a lot of categories which are way underspent or unused, 
And there are a lot of things where, you know, we've spent money somewhere, but we didn't spend it somewhere else. And it just, it makes it, it makes it very, and there's always going to be some of that, but I think there's opportunity for improvement when we go through our budget process in the fall to try and do a better job at this. Well, I think the only reason we've got less we have over in our income is because we had grants that were never budgeted for that we weren't applying for when we did the, when we did the budget. Well, you know? it's just that though, Dorinda, that we got more, and, and, and you know, some of this stuff you can't project, but we got more state aid to highways than we thought we were going to get. Right, I mean, that's I, what I'm saying. You know, so these are monies that we didn't know when we did the budget, but if you look at the actual budgeted items, most of them are pretty on the money. No, I, I don't, I don't disagree, but all I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, when we set the tax rate and when we do the budget year after year after year after year, we get significant extra money. And I don't know how we account for that in our, in our budgeting process, but uh, we should. So I'm, I'm just suggesting that we try and do a more detailed job. Some of the things were, were the, the big issue items were all spot, spot on. I agree. But there are thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars there when you when you uh, when you look at that. So anyway, but thank you for that report, and it shows. I mean, what it what it shows is we're going to be more than fine at the end of the year, which is good. Um, well, we're pretty. Uh, we're only at we're at ninety four percent of the budget, and we still have you know all of June invoices basically to come in or several of them. So, I mean, I think we're going to be like right on target almost. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't mean we're going to have a huge surplus. I'm just saying we're going to be, we're going to be okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Well, I will. I'm writing a big note on top of the agenda to call uh, call John Riley and start the wheels uh, turning tomorrow morning. And I'll uh, I'll let everybody know what he's thinking and yeah, good thinking and saying. And I'm going to ask him to uh, to actually formally write us a letter with his thoughts and recommendations for our next uh, board meeting, so we have some real documentation sure. rather than just say. He doesn't recommend doing it because he thinks it's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, okay. Other business. Approval of minutes from the June 1, 2021 select board meeting. Sir, I'll move. Moved by Steve. Second. Mary and Liz weren't there, Next. so they can't move. What you said, Mary and Liz were, were not there, so they can't move. They can't oh, vote or move. Okay. Well, Steve, Steve made the motion. I just seconded. it. Perfect. Okay. So all in favor, which would be three of us. Phil, <laughs> Phil, Steve, and Peter. Yep. Say aye. Everybody aye. abstains. Uh, consideration consideration of providing Washington Electric Co-op permission to install power lines along Leland Farm Road. Near the residence of Nan Hathaway, action likely. Wow, that's that's quite a different uh, permit than we've seen before. At least I think it is. Do we typically get all that language, or did you just share it with us this time, Sarah? Uh, you typically get all that language. I just uh, nope. the only thing I did was I just had to rescan it in case some people were getting cut off. But um, yeah, I don't think you guys ever read the back of the of the form. Well, I've never, I've never read it or, or seen it that I know of. <laughs> I, was, I, I mean, it, it, it all sounded, it all, it all sounded yeah. fine to me. I mean, basic, basically, uh, what they're doing is running a power line within the town right away, um, out to the new house that's being built out there. Right, Peter. Um, Peter, I sent something to, um. Sarah, earlier, I had two guys from uh, uh, three people walk with me um, on the proposed easement, and they suggested that we had as conditions the language I sent to Sarah. And it just says, WEC agreed to chip all brush, mark all trees to be cut, 
to cut all firewood, ash, maple, birch, and dead leaves in log lengths and move the logs to a location selected by the landowner and to stack all non-firewood trees. So Sarah has all that language. Okay, but we haven't seen it, right? You haven't seen it because Sarah didn't want to add it, but I sent it to her, so. Well, uh, just to be clear, I mean, you, you can add, you guys can add that language at the bottom of the permit, of any permit. If you look all the way down, it's like you can add those conditions. And I got a call today from uh, Brian at WEC saying that the permit needed to be changed. And I said, I were, we you know, we're one hour from the meeting, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> Uh, you know, Michael Levine has already asked for a copy. People are not, they, you need to, more, we need to work on the permit that's been warned. And he said, well, any, any test select board can add those conditions at the bottom. So those are the conditions that Mary just talked about. And the, the guy, you know, Brent Lilly and Larry Gilbert are the guys in charge of the right of way. Right. And, uh, and that's the language that they suggested to be put in as the conditions. So the, I wanted Sarah to have it just so she could read well, it back. I mean, it sounds it sounds it sounds okay I'll move to me. Of that with those conditions. Okay. Second. Okay. Can I, can I uh, make a comment, Peter? This is actually Michael Levine on Sandy's iPad. Okay. Yep. Um, I I just want to remind. Um, everybody, but I guess in particular WEC, before they do the clearing, there are specific um, boundaries marked for tree clearing with that original permit. And I just wanna make sure WEC is aware of where those lines are and doesn't cut outside the line, so to speak. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a line that shows the, basically a tree line that you, that you can't cut outside of. I don't think it's a problem, but I do want to make sure that somebody makes WEC aware of the fact that that exists if they don't know. Steve, Peter? Peter. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. This is why we have a tree warden. This is why we statutorily have a tree warden. And so probably the person who should be contacted is Gary Lamel because he is Easy. supposed to work on the trees in the town right of way whenever there's any type of cutting. Yep. There you go. There, there you go. go. Okay, that, that's perhaps a separate question though, because that's the town right of way. I'm talking about the, the WEC line that's gonna continue on to the private property. Oh, well, that's not a town issue. Well, no, but it does go with this request, doesn't it? Oh, or no. doesn't it? Is this no. just no. for the town right of way? That's the town right of way. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, okay. get, involved, we don't get involved in the private property. Well, well, Michael, uh, you and I should talk because I wasn't aware of that myself. Okay, as I said, looking at the, the map that Sarah sent me and the original map, I don't think there there's any uh, overlap of concern, but, um, and I, I have talked to the landowner about it and he, he knows about it and he's planning on being there when WEC is there, so. Uh, but if it's not, if it's not a, town right-of-way issue, then I won't take up your time with it. I guess the only question I do have, though, is if town issues the permit for the original subdivision with the conditions that I just said, but the town doesn't have anything to say about the private land, like, so what happens if a condition of a... That's a zoning permit. So... Issue. Planning permission. So the planning commission would be the enforcement agency? They're the ones that are gonna to have to know about, it. they're the ones that put the conditions in the permit. Right, but but if, if this or any other permit around town were to be violated, is it the planning commission that is responsible for the enforcement of those conditions? I believe it is. Okay, well, that's, that's what I'm asking. Think, I can't think of who else it would be, Michael. It would be the zoning administrator acting on behalf of the planning commission. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, good to know. That sounds right to me. Well, what you're saying, uh, Michael, is it has nothing to do with the land on Leland Farm Road. You're really talking about the private drive that's up 
to the subdomain. Right. right. So it really doesn't affect what you're talking about. That's so I, I kind of apologize for bringing it up. No, nope, no problem. So um, we have moved and seconded approving the permit with the extra language that Mary suggested. Anything else to discuss? Then we should vote. And uh, Mary, I'm happy, I guess, I'm happy I, I, guess I would suggest that you abstain maybe. What do you think well, about I that? Well, I had to say I'm happy to recuse myself if that's what's appropriate. Well, I, I kind of feel it is. I don't know how everybody else feels. I think so. Yeah, OK. So um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the permit with the additional language. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Mary, you're recusing yourself? Yes. And is anybody voting no? Okay. We're good. Uh, review and approve a contract with the Washington County Sheriff's Department to provide speed enforcement. Here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> the non contract contract. What do you mean by that? Well, they never they never deliver the service that they contract for. Well, so it's an un, un it's an un wait, wait, it's not a non contract. It's just a. I I know, Mary. I didn't use the correct. They do the work. They never they never do what they contract to do because they don't have the available resources, right. and right. Oh, we never true. spend the money, and we never get the speed enforcement. So it's frustrating to me. That's all I'm saying. I move we approve it. I'll second. Can you designate a signer? Uh, Sarah is the designated signer. So just to be clear, it's going to be 70, you guys have budgeted $7,500 for speed enforcement. I assume there's no other entity that's going to be speed enforcement. So I just divide that by $30.75 for the number of hours of speed enforcement, right? Or do you want to do what you've done in the past? Which is add more money and more. I don't know what you want to do. Do you just want to keep it straight up math? Yeah. They can't, they can't spend the yeah. money anyway. So, right. so yeah. they've only, I spent, yeah. they've only spent like $4,500 so far this year. Okay. okay. Speaking of speed enforcement, um, I like the, the post, you know, the new things in uh, Putnamville. Yeah, they're very nice. Yeah, and they they work. I'm I'm curious to see what the townspeople say. If it's you know, it probably worked in the beginning, but is it continuing to work? According to Albie Bourne, yes, he's good. Thrilled. Good, excellent. Until you get teenagers driving through there trying to see how fast they can go. <laughs> All the wheels are off then, Randy. <laughs> yeah, that would be like that would be like a young Peter Hood. <laughs> I uh. My That's darling good. children disclosed to me some years later that when they were in high school, when the city of Montpelier would put those things on Terrace Street, they would have contests to see how high they could get the signs to go. I've <laughs> never done that. You should do it on a bike. It's even more fun. <laughs> see how fast you can bike. So, well, Liz, you made the nobody, motion. Nobody. Did, yes, we need to vote. We need yes, to vote on I made that. a motion. We made the motion. And, and who's who seconded? seconded? Steve. Steve. Who? Yeah. Can, can I ask a question before you vote on it? Yes. Explain to me again what you said. I didn't understand that. You have a contract, but you don't spend any of the money. Well, they don't spend it all. We've got a we do a contract with them with seventy five hundred dollars, and they never put in enough hours to use up the seventy five hundred. So why do we do it at all? Well. They do some enforcement, but they don't do as much as we'd like them to do because they don't have the resources. We'd like them to do $7,500 worth, but they never do. Mm -hmm. We'd like them here more. Are there other entities that we might be able to contract with? No. They did even worse. No. In the past, we've we've tried the Vermont State Police. No, nah, they're so overbooked. Everybody. Bob Lucas said at the uh, last in-person meeting, town meeting we had, they just don't have the people. Right. right. Yeah. You know, it'd probably be cheaper if we bought all those things that we bought for um, Route 12 <laughs> and had them scattered throughout every year. We'd buy a new one. 
keep people on their toes. Eight thousand dollars a piece. Yep. Well, you can you can get some that don't cost that much, that that are just mounted on the signpost. Barry Town has them. And they put them all over the place. You never know where they're built. Just un unbolt did it. They, yeah. Does it, Steve? Yes. Did they say it helps? Yes. Huh. Everybody seems to say they work. So, you know, I think something we should something we should think about when we get to our budgeting process is uh, maybe spending some of our money doing that. I mean, we could probably spend the spend the three or four thousand dollars that the that the sheriff never uses and buy a couple of those signs every year. I don't know. That Worth looking at. I like that idea. Yeah. Okay, so somebody has to be um, remind us when we get to budget time. I'll put I it on my to, calendar. Yeah, I'll, I'll remind you because I want that thing down here at the farm first. <laughs> <laughs> no, call for Hill Road. Sorry, Steve. Okay. So you're getting you're getting your robe repaved this year, Steve. No, I don't no want it. for you. He doesn't want like that. I want it bumpy <laughs> in front of the farm. <laughs> you want it. Need them. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. okay. Um, any correspondence, Sarah? You got to vote on that motion. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor of approving the uh, speed enforcement contract, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've approved it. And you're going to designate me as signer? 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 Yes. yes. <clears throat> Orders? You're all set, Dorinda? Uh, yeah, I think I got enough. I saw Liz, I saw Peter, and I think Phil, so yeah. I should be okay. No, okay. I sent, I sent I, one in, too. Hold on. on. I, did, I just forgot to send it in. I did not approve them, Dorinda. I sent you an approval for um, the CVCRP oh. um, payment. Okay. I just saw your email come through. I didn't open it. Okay. You skipped right over correspondence, Peter. Well, I, I I asked if there was any correspondence and I got interrupted, but I'm back to correspondence. Yeah, you were interrupted by me saying we need to vote on the motion. Right. So we did receive, um, and this is something that we're going to have to talk with the BCA at, at large with, but we did receive an appeal of the 2021 grievance from Scott Bowden. I suggest that we pick this conversation up in executive session. Uh, as you may know, Scott uh, is uh, already appealing the Board of Civil Authorities decision from 2020. So uh, this raises uh, interesting issues, but the bottom line is that uh, by state statute, we must schedule a BCA hearing within 14 days of the final day of notice, which is tomorrow at 5 p.m. That means that the board is going to have to meet again. I am very sorry, along with the, the justices of the peace, sometime between tonight and the 29th. Yeah. If that hearing goes forward. And you never heard back from the guy that you know, and that's through. probably something we'll discuss in executive session. Is that yeah. why we've got it noticed at 635? We have a couple of things. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just getting that in the minutes and on we go. Okay. So um, we do need to go into executive session. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. All those you have to allow them. whether or not you're going to allow Dorinda and me to enter into executive yes. session. I'll, I'll amend that motion to allow Sarah and Dorinda. I'll All right. I'll amend the second. Okay. Okay. You're gonna vote. Thank you. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're in executive session. Okay, let's give you some time to uh yep. to make sure recording that stopped. Bye, Randy. Well, I just I just have a question before you go into executive session. Okay. Are these always at the end? Like there's nothing after the fact that that comes into play? Normally no, because normally I mean there is there is a chance sometimes that we could take action after executive session, but normally most of the time it is discussion of.